A starship journey to the moon. To many, this concept once seemed dubious, given the numerous obstacles facing SpaceX's massive lunar lander. But what if SpaceX addressed these issues by leveraging its own successful systems, such as those implemented on its Dragon spacecraft? This idea has gone beyond mere speculation. It could indeed represent a methodology that would allow SpaceX to maintain its involvement in Artemis 3 and potentially land on the moon ahead of its competitors. So, how could this plan actually come to fruition? What benefits and challenges would it present? And how should SpaceX prepare for this potential path? Let's explore all of this in today's episode of NR Studio. The role of SpaceX and Starship in the Artemis 3 effort is arguably more ambiguous than ever, especially following Sean Duffy's latest proposal, which raises significant concerns regarding the timeline, readiness, and overall danger of the mission. This proposal focuses on SpaceX and its competitors, with Blue Origin emerging as the leading alternative, offering a solution that could reassure NASA of its ability to meet the tight schedule for a crewed lunar landing. Facing this challenging environment, SpaceX consistently provides updates on Starship HLS, primarily focusing on progress in design development and refinement. Alongside these updates, fresh ideas have emerged from SpaceX supporters and analysts, these suggestions include a simplified mission framework or the development of a more compact version of Starship, often referred to as the Stubby concept, aimed at reducing the vehicle's height and mitigating risks associated with ascent and surface activities. The goal behind these proposals is to reduce the need for complex preparations, such as extensive refueling operations, or to mitigate potential risks. However, none of these suggestions can comprehensively address all ongoing challenges or accelerate development sufficiently to ensure an early lunar landing. This is where a bold and innovative idea comes into play. The concept known as the Starship and Dragon integration emerges. While initially unconventional, Dragon's reliability makes it an attractive option. Dragon has effectively met NASA's resupply needs for the ISS without fail. It has reliably transported astronauts and cargo for years, even providing emergency support to other spacecraft. Its performance track record demonstrates that Dragon is one of the most reliable vehicles in contemporary space exploration. This proven reliability could lay the foundation for faster and more controlled trips to the moon. This approach would begin with the construction of one or two orbital depots, each depot would require approximately five Starship tankers to replenish it. If SpaceX were to establish two depots, one would stay in Earth orbit awaiting the arrival of Starship HLS, while the other would head to lunar orbit to assist with refueling before the return trip. Should there only be a single depot utilized, that depot would be dispatched to lunar orbit with Starship HLS receiving its refueling from the Starship tankers in Earth orbit. Once the depots are prepared, Starship HLS would launch uncrewed and refuel as necessary. Subsequently, the crew would depart from Earth in a Crew Dragon spacecraft. Since Dragon only has to reach low Earth orbit, the Falcon 9 rocket would adequately fulfill that requirement. If a slightly elevated orbit proves necessary, SpaceX could simply use up the Falcon 9 booster, which remains more efficient than utilizing a Falcon Heavy. Upon reaching orbit, Dragon would meet up with Starship HLS and dock. The astronauts would transition into Starship, which would then head directly to the moon. This new framework significantly deviates from the existing Artemis approach. Starship HLS would no longer depend on docking in lunar orbit with Orion. Instead, Starship would function as a complete craft that transports the crew from Earth orbit to the lunar surface and back again. Once the mission on the surface concludes, Starship HLS would take off from the moon and return to lunar orbit where it would refuel again at the depot positioned there. It would then make its way back to Earth orbit, allowing the astronauts to transfer back to Dragon for re-entry and splashdown. This integrated system might allow SpaceX to streamline operations, rely more fully on its own technology, and possibly outpace both China and Blue Origin. It is a strategy centered on simplicity, control, and speed. Do you consider this a viable option? Indicate your answer with either a yes or a no in the comments below. Now we arrive at the final point. Before any assessment can be made, the structure itself needs to be evaluated carefully. The first and most evident benefit arises as soon as the strategy is presented. This idea relies completely on SpaceX vehicles, removing the necessity to collaborate with external systems like NASA's Orion spacecraft, thereby keeping everything within the SpaceX framework which simplifies the mission, reducing the number of interfaces to manage, the timelines to synchronize, and the potential external delays that could lead to major issues. 
It also reinforces ongoing critiques that systems like SLS and Orion are slow, expensive, and face persistent doubts regarding their long-term viability and efficiency. For SpaceX, managing every key component of the mission internally provides a considerable degree of control. They can determine their own schedules, modify their testing protocols, and freely experiment with the interplay between Dragon and Starship HLS without the need to await other entities. A completely internal architecture provides the groundwork for lasting autonomy. Once SpaceX demonstrates that the synergy of Dragon and Starship HLS can safely transport crews to the moon and return, they will be ready to undertake subsequent missions without depending on NASA spacecraft. This may involve increased flight frequency, different types of missions, or even the initial phases of preparing for Mars. Another benefit pertains to fuel efficiency. The revised strategy offers Starship HLS a significantly more straightforward mission approach. Rather than traveling back and forth to dock with Orion in lunar orbit, Starship would collect the crew in Earth orbit and proceed directly to the Moon. This minimizes the need for extensive maneuvers and conserves fuel, thereby reducing the frequency of required refueling operations. As refueling tends to be among the most complicated and time-consuming aspects of the architecture, any improvements in this area can substantially enhance mission efficacy. The approach also improves crew safety during one of the most sensitive stages of the mission. Crew transfer would occur in Earth orbit instead of lunar orbit. Earth orbit allows for robust communication, quick monitoring, and responsive options in emergencies. If an unforeseen problem occurs, the crew would remain within reach of Earth's support and rescue capabilities. This contrasts with lunar orbit, where communication is feasible yet immediate assistance is not readily available. Furthermore, the updated system enables both Dragon and Starship HLS to realize their full capabilities. Dragon is among the most advanced crew carriers ever designed. It boasts exceptional reliability, a verified flight record, and a significantly lower cost compared to Orion. It does not necessitate major redesign or redevelopment to fulfill the needs of this lunar architecture. Minor structural or docking adjustments would likely suffice. With an existing fleet already operational, it presents a practical and economical option for a mission of this magnitude. Starship HLS also gains advantages from this broadened function. Under NASA's existing framework, the HLS behaves more like a shuttle than a fully-fledged spacecraft. It only collects crew in lunar orbit, lands on the lunar surface, ascends back to orbit, and then transfers the astronauts back to Orion before it is discarded. This method fails to fully utilize the capabilities that Starship HLS is meant to provide. In the newly designed mission, Starship is transformed into a complete end-to-end -end spacecraft capable of transporting crew from Earth orbit all the way to the moon and back. This endows it with a more substantial purpose and sets the stage for upcoming missions that will require Starship to carry crew across vast interplanetary distances. However, despite these benefits, several challenges remain. A primary concern is landing safety. Starship HLS has a significant height. This dimension is often highlighted as a major concern by its critics. Without significant redesign efforts, landing operations could be hazardous due to its high center of gravity and unpredictable terrain conditions. SpaceX could choose to increase the landing legs or improve navigation and descent technology, but these options have not been fully developed at this stage. Another significant obstacle is designing and building a refueling mechanism for lunar expeditions. The proposed strategy involves sending a depot into lunar orbit, but the logistics of transporting it pose a substantial technical challenge. SpaceX will need a reliable propulsion mechanism to safely transport the depot over long distances. There are two primary alternatives. One is the development of new propulsion technology, likely derived from the Falcon 9 second stage, while the other involves attaching thrusters directly to the depot itself. SpaceX has tested a prototype depot power module, with a focus on the electrical generation and distribution system designed for this type of depot. Despite this progress, many questions remain, particularly regarding the long-term protection of the depot equipment and propellant stored in the extreme conditions of space. Ensuring the long-term protection of the systems and fuel will be crucial to mission success and crew safety. Safety concerns also apply to the refueling process in lunar orbit while the crew is aboard the Starship HLS. If complications arise during this task, the astronauts will have no escape route. Crew presence during refueling has been controversial in the past, and NASA may be hesitant to support it, especially so far from Earth. Considering all of these elements, a crucial question remains. Is it truly realistic to use Dragon and Starship for a crewed lunar landing mission? Share your thoughts below. 
Regardless of whether this integrated architecture is ultimately chosen, one thing is undeniable. SpaceX has a lot of work to do before Starship reaches full operational readiness. While Dragon has proven its reliability through successful crewed and uncrewed flights over the years, Starship is still in active development and will need to demonstrate significant improvements before it can fulfill its ambitious role as a lunar lander. One of the key initial goals is to validate the capabilities of Starship V3. This refined model is expected to lay the groundwork for Starship HLS and the Starship Tanker. Only after SpaceX confirms the performance, stability, and reliability of V3 can the company confidently proceed with production of the specialized variants needed for future lunar missions. That's all for today's episode. See you in the next time.